Ghana's Parliament House has finally introduced sign language interpreters for their proceedings. This was necessitated following the Youth Bridge Foundation as part of an educational tour and policy dialogue under its Access to Justice project funded by the Open Society Initiative for West Africa. In November 2017, 20 students and teachers from the Cape Coast School for the Deaf were present in Parliament to observe proceedings and the 2018 budget debate which centered on education, energy, youth and sports. However, the students after the proceedings outlined the absence of sign language interpreters as a communication gap and no person with disability as a parliamentarian as some of the challenges encountered during their visits. After the budget has been read, how will, will they make it simpler for the visually impaired also to assess the budget because they cannot read the prints? When I meet my hearing counterparts, communication becomes a problem to us. And I would like to plead with Parliament to make a policy so that sign language can be taught at the basic school level. To this end, in October 2018, Professor Mike Okwe, the Speaker of Parliament, announced the commencement of sign language interpreters to the House. I think we should be pleased to join sister parliaments of the UK, New Zealand, Australia, South Africa and Zimbabwe in the employment of the sign language as a medium of interpretation in Parliament. And uh, honourable members, it is with great honour that I announce that today the Parliament of Ghana will commence transmission of sign language throughout this country. We are very pleased with the Honourable Speaker of Parliament's decision that persons with disability would also be able to assess parliamentary proceedings because sign language interpreters will be used on the floor of Parliament to help interpret proceedings. We also wish to call on all district assemblies to include sign language interpreters at their facilities to support special persons. This is because when these special persons find themselves in these facilities like hospitals and other places, it is difficult to communicate with their colleague hearing persons. We should make it a very important factor to include persons living with disability in all facets of human life. Under the 1992 Constitution, the Constitution frowns against discrimination on persons based on disability, amongst other things. Again, Article 29 of the 1992 Constitution provides general protection for persons living with disability. In view of this fact, we humbly urge all other development partners, NGOs, to work extensively in this area to ensure that the rights of persons with disability are protected. My name is Esther Yaira Atipo, Legal and Advocacy Manager for Youth Bridge Foundation. I am also the Project Coordinator for Access to Justice for Young Persons and Persons with Disability. The Access to Justice Project, which is being implemented by the Youth Bridge Foundation, with funding from the Open Society Initiative for West Africa, OSIWA, seeks to address the issues of inclusion of persons with disability in decision-making processes.